Hello, CS38. Um, I'm going to re record the lecture for today as we had some issues with the demo. So, um, in this week, we are going to cover Unit 2, in that we are going to go over benchmarking and profiling in Python. So, to address the assignment, it's best to look at the notes and also follow along with this video to complete your assignment. So we will start with covering the notes. Um, in the notes for chapter two, it starts with defining profiling. And profiling is a technique to pinpoint resources intensive spots in application. So in an application, we want to take a look at memory allocation and also processor requirement for execution. So in profiling, uh, we can use Python package or C profiler to be able to assess our application, which means that we create a thing called profiler. And profiler simply is a program that we can run to monitor how long each function would take. It's recommended that we use C profile, which uses C extension for the overhead. And this is suitable if you have a large or lengthy program. You can also use profile, which is built into Python package. And with this, we would be able to determine the performance of our application. The second part for the chapter, it's gonna address benchmarking. And for benchmark, we would write Python script to assess the total execution time for the application. We can look at the runtime for each of a function. We can look at the total runtime and we can look at each line runtime. So in application design, we need to look at three areas. Number one is to make your program run. So we're going to make sure that it works. So our software needs to be in a working state. Second, we want to make it right. So in design, we want to make sure that your pro our program is optimized and cohesive to give you accurate results. Third area in design is to make it fast. So we have to think about data allocation or data structure in that our performance is going to be optimized where our memory usage is going to constitute um, results. So you don't want to run into problems in memory usage. So in the assignment, we would start number one with defining what profiling and profiling again on notes. It describes the technique to pinpoint resource extensive spot in the, in the application. So in some program, we would, require, we would require more memory storage or for data or processing power. So when we profile, we would create a profiler, which is a program that monitors how long the function would take to execute. So to create profilers, we break it down into two areas. One, we can use the C profiler, which is used for extensive program or long running program. So if you have large program, <clears throat> you would use the C extension, which is C profile. And for C profile, it uses C compiler underneath. So the Python interpreter will utilize the C compiler as it access the library to be able to give you the profiler. The second area is gonna be profile. This is a pure Python module, which is a Python file. It interfaces with C profile. So as you can see, that it's still going to use C profile to 
give you the assessment of your program, but it does add significant overhead. So we wanna keep that in mind. So compare C profile to regular profile. C profile is more beneficial. It is recommended. Now, when you use profile, you would see statistic information about your program in various parts. So if your program can include five functions, it's gonna be able to loop those functions and assess those functions and give you some information. And with that, it uses a PSAT module to give you the statistic. And on page one of the notes, we also describe the application design approach, make it run, make it right, and make it fast. Working state, ensure that your program is solid and have optimized performance. And lastly, we want to have a well-structured program and we want to look at memory allocation. For question four, it asks you what is benchmarking. And benchmarking is a representative of the use case, which is used to assess runtime of the application. So benchmark would keep score of how fast the program with the each new version. So as you write different iteration of your program and redesign your program, we can use benchmarks to determine the improvement of your program, how it changes from one to the next version. A simple way to benchmark is to use time command in Unix or Linux to really measure the execution time for the process. And we will look at this when we work with the lab this week. Coming back to the note, the author included example using the particle simulator. And simply the program would have X and Y coordinates to show the starting position of the particle. And in order to simulate that it is moving, we would include the animations for the motion of the particle. And so when you take a look at the example code on page two, you would see that there's a class called particle. And in that you would have X, Y that would represent the, the location on screen and the angle. Then to simulate the particle movement, you would see that class particle simulator would then be included. And we would then increment the X and Y so that way it shows the particle moving across the screen. Now, because we are using a visualization of an object on screen, the code is using matplotlib. So at the beginning of your, the script for the animation, you would see that matplotlib module is being imported. And this is how we would simulate the animation of the particle in the example program. So as you use the module, you have to install it. And so when we do the pie test in the exercise for the assignment, we have to make sure that this is installed in order to execute that program for the pie test. So as we proceed looking at the example, there's various breakdown in the description on how that we can implement the simulation for the particle. On page four, it describes the process and how we can write benchmark test script. So the first step in writing tests and benchmark is to make sure that we check for results. That means that we have to rewrite our code multiple times because scientifically, if you repeat the procedures multiple times and still produce the same result, then you would have the correct procedures. 
So when we test this, we want to make sure that there is correct output throughout the iterations of our application. And as the example progress, what you would see is there are additional function being added for test evolve. And then we would use the assert statement to be able to input values for X and Y coordinates to show the motion of the particle. So benchmark is useful when we want to track how fast our program is running. And as you change different versions, we, we improve our program and we would have multiple versions, we can create, when we can create benchmark. So when we write benchmark script, we would implement time or time it module. So in Linux, if you're using Linux, you can use the time command. And when you use the time command, you would see three areas of time. Real time, which shows the run processes from start to end. User time, which is the cumulative time for all the processors or all the CPU to compute. So if you want to assess CPU performance, you would look at the user time. Now, as you know, we have multi-core processor, so user time can be evaluated when you are writing programs that have multiple processes. We have sys to represent system time, so that would relate to system tasks. This is cumulative time for all the CPUs to execute the system-related tasks such as memory allocation. So there are three areas of time that you will be presented with when you are looking at benchmarks. So benchmark would show you how long is the execution time from setup to teardown of the program or the process. Now with that, we can talk about time it module. So time it module simply is a Python file or library that we can use to be able to loop multiple times and measure the execution of your functions. So you can set it to loop 10 times, but by default, it should loop three times. Now, in that, you can also measure statements. You can test statements. You can test different portion of your code by implementing time it module. So if you use Jupyter Notebook, Sage Notebook, Anaconda, you would see that IPython is a shell that, um, that is interactive with the interpreter. And IPython uses magic commands and magic command uses the percentage symbol. So you can directly use the shell in order to execute time it. So in this example, we would have Py IPython and using IPython, we simply use the magic command time it with the benchmark method which allows us to output the best time out of the three loops for our test file, which is CMU. Another way that you can use time it is to call on Python in command line. Whether you're using Linux, Windows, or Mac OS, you would call on Python using switch M and time it module. Here, we would then test our, our file, which is simul. 
And in that, by default, again, it's going to loop three times and it's going to output time in milliseconds per loop. If you use Python interface, you can also write a function or you can write a script that would look like this. So we would import time it, we would have a variable called result. And here is where we would use time it with the, with the benchmark method. Then we would set up by import benchmark in main and we would have it loop. So it's gonna repeat three times, just like the last two ways to use time it. By default, it's gonna repeat three times and then it's gonna give you the best time for execution from the three. Now, in the larger Python application, we would then use PyTest. And PyTest, we can implement benchmark plugin. So you simply install PyTest-benchmark. And you would use PyTest command once you install it to be able to utilize the framework and test your application. So here it shows you that this is the program that's being tested and this is the output. So as it assert different value into the program, right? It would give you the output of how fast or how slow the program would be. So in our assignment, for number four, it asks you what is benchmarking and describe the purpose. And we would say that it is a simple representative use case that can be used to assess the running of the application. It would be useful to keep score of how fast your program as it progressed in different versions. And the simple way is to use Unix time command. So when you benchmark large Python application, you would use PyTest framework with PyTest benchmark plugin. And so to test this, what you would refer to is first, you need to download the three files that I release in the assignments. So when you go to your course, go to assignment two, and you would find um, the three files. Simul for the simulator, for the particle simulator. And then you would have Taylor and test simul. So once we download it, it's gonna be in your downloads folder. And what we will need to do later on is to copy it into our Python virtual environment in order to run the benchmark. So in number six, you would start with using command prompt. And again, this is, I'm gonna do the demo in Windows PC. So if you're using Mac OS or Linux, make sure that you are um, looking at how to enable virtual environment in those systems. And you can also use the same command to create directory. So when you use a Python virtual environment, it's best to keep it in one folder. And using that folder, we are going to activate our virtual environment, which allows us to use it for testing and installing appropriate packages for the tests. You don't want to install packages that might impact other programs outside of that folder. 
So the benefit of this is to keep it isolated for testing purposes, and you can install any type of package that you need and module that you need in order to test your application. So we will start with, let me clear this. So when you open up command prompt in Windows, you simply do a search CMD and you will find command prompt. And keep in mind that I already installed Python. I also have Anaconda, but you don't have to use Anaconda. If you install Anaconda, there are packages that you would need to use conda command instead of pip. So here is my default path, which is my system. So I am in the folder for my username and under the users folder. Then what I would do next is I'm going to move into desktop. So I'm going to use the CD command to go into desktop. It is like we would click on desktop to access its content. So now notice that the path changed to desktop. Here, I am going to make a folder called test one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a make dear, which is make directory. And as I already have test one, so I'm gonna go ahead and try with test two. So once I make the folder, I'm gonna go ahead and move into that folder. So CD test two. So what I did here was I accessed desktop and keep in mind that this might be capitalized. I created a folder. I move into the folder. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use Python. Now, if you have Python 2 and Python 3 installed on your system, you have to use Python 3 command for Windows. But if you only have Python 3 installed, you can simply use Python command with the switch end. So as I only have Python 3, I'm going to go ahead and use this Python. And what we're going to do is we are going to enable virtual environment for a folder called test1-env. You want to have a subfolder inside your folder so that way you can keep it organized. Can I make this a virtual environment? I sure can. But what I like to do is I might have multiple virtual environment for my tests in multiple iteration of my program. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy that. And then I can paste by control V. So as you can see here, it tells me that it's creating an error, right? Return, no exit. So what I need to do is I need to come back over here, go to my desktop, look at test two, look at this folder. And it tells me that I need to have a, I have a default pip. So what I can do is I can install the update for pip. And so that way, and pip is for to install Python packages. It's very useful when you need to install module and packages in Python, but you can also use conda if you use anaconda. So when you look at this now, here's my desktop. I have a test two folder. I have a, a subfolder called test1.env. And in this, now I should have scripts where my Python exe exists. So it will execute my Python application. And because my virtual environment is created, it created a configuration file, which is shown here. So once we have this, 
we are going to move into the subfolder, test ENV, and then CD script. So we're going to do that next. So we are currently in the test one or test two folder. We're going to go ahead and move into test ENV, test one dash ENV. And then in that, we are going to move into the script folder. And keep in mind that it is capital S. So now I'm inside that folder. So here, I would then use the activate command to activate my virtual environment. Even when I created it, it's not ready until I activate it. So now there are different procedure in, in documentation that you can also use activate.bat. So when you simply use the activate command, what that does is it runs activate.bat on Windows system. And as you can see, it shows that here that because I have Anaconda installed, it shows conda.bat activate. So I had accomplished step H in number six. On step I, it tells me to copy the downloaded files from step A to the script folder. So I would go to my downloads folder and be able to, to copy those files, okay? But I have it in a different location, so I'm gonna copy it from my test one as I previously tested this. So copy, but you would go to the downloads folder. And I would go to test two, test one ENV, open up the script folder, and we are gonna paste it here. Because it has to be in here in order for us to execute the PyTest. Notice that I have Python exe here and it's going to use that to be able to run these. So virtual environment keep us separated from the rest of the system. So that way we can maintain the packages that we need for the application. Now, if you are good with, with command prompt, you can also use copy command in order to copy the files in from your download. So you have to move out of the folder, copy it, and then bring it back into the script. Or you can use a graphical user interface to do that. Then in the next part, we're going to upgrade our PyTest. And keep in mind that PyTest comes with Python package. So you want to get the latest version for it. You can use pip or pip3, pip3 specifically for Python 3. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And as I already had previously installed, it's gonna say that it met the requirement or it satisfied the installation request. But for you, it might take a few minutes for it to go through as it would download the package and be able to install. So with this, I had accomplished the upgrade for the PyTest. Then in the next part, I'm going to go ahead and install matplotlib. Now, if you are only using Python install package, you can use pip. Like I said before, some package require conda. So it's best to go to the documentation. So you can simply search for matplotlib and it will take you here. So the first result, we can go to the, the organization website, then click get started and you should see 
the instruction on how to install. So on the right, it tells me that I can do conda install or pip install on the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and try the pip install. Okay, and it's met. If that doesn't work for you, you can also try the conda install. So I'm gonna copy that and paste that so I don't have to type. And this might take a little bit, sometime it would pause like right here. So you got to give it time in, in order to get the package in. So it would show you that it is installed. So as I have installed it, it's going to look, it should show you the licenses for the conda and then it would be able to install. All right. That's really important because if you don't have this, it's gonna throw an error when we run the simul file. In the next step, we are gonna install PyTest benchmark. So we're gonna go ahead and do a pip3. And that simply is a plugin for PyTest, which we upgraded earlier. And notice that I am in my virtual environment, so it shows me the base like this. But when you exit, it should bring you back to your regular path without the base, okay? So now since I have benchmark PyTest, I'm gonna use PyTest command to be able to run, so. And as I have those files in the folder, you would see test evolve. And this is gonna be, it's gonna give you the min, the max, the mean, standard. Remember we talked about the statistic for the benchmark, okay? The median, IRQs, IQRs, outliers, OPS, the rounds, and the iteration is one. So it uses the P stat in order to give you this. So the operation per second, I'm going to show you that it's one pass, 2.99 seconds. And it runs this, this test simul.py. So let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, and in the notes, it also includes this. So simply, we are going to import in Signal, which is the particle class, particle simulator. We're gonna bring in these classes from the other file. And we are going to set up the coordinates. Here's our object, which is simulator. And we're gonna pass particles. And in order to show the involvement, the movement in the particles, we would then update or we would use evolve method. And then in the later part here, we have a function. And this function is going to assert the value for X and Y. So you would see the motion in the particle. And right above that, you would see the objects P0, P1, and P2 for the three particles, particle one, particle two, and particle three. So when it tested this Python file, right, it gives you the statistic and this is what the benchmark looks like. So once you have that, take a, a screen capture for your assignment submission. Next, we are going to run C profile for our simul Python file. So in the same virtual environment on your command prompt, you are going to 
go ahead and do that. So here, what it's telling me is it's going to give me the result, total time, end calls, and so on. Notice that I have some trace back now. So what we want is it's telling me that I don't have matplotlib, right? Which you saw that I had previously installed up here. So I'm going to go ahead and rerun this and make sure that it brings in, even though sometimes you know it's not able to get the pie plot. You can also, this is a package, so you can also install the subcomponents of that package. So if you do the up arrow key um, a few times to the command that you previously used, so up arrow key allows you to revert back to the prior command. Okay. And I'm going to make sure. That this gets complete. So we can also check, right? Notice that once you have your benchmarks, um, you would have a, a subdirectory showing this. You would also have your PyTest cache. If you open that up, right, you would see some of your um, package information. So to continue, um, in the case where if you do run into that, you can go back and check to see if your um, matplotlib is installed. But as you can see, when we run this, we would see that there are 316 function calls. And that will happen in 0 0.001 seconds. And if you go down, it actually list the number of calls and how long it would take per call, which is very small amount of time. Okay, so you can take a screen capture of this. Now, um, in the next one, what we can do is we can run this. So the difference between step C and step B is that we are using the C profile, but this is to look at total time and this we are gonna output a file called prop and it's gonna contain the result of the profiling for this Python file, okay? So there are multiple ways that we can output a profile for your program, we can evaluate certain uh, values such as total time, or we can have the profile information output into a, a file called prop. So what we will do next is we will go ahead and run this, okay? What you have is it's, going to um, give you the total time output.
So now if you come back here and if we come back to our test one folder, we would see that there is a prop file generated. Okay. So that file is going to contain profile information for Simul, which is this application. And this is how we would use the C profiler using that command. So to see it in, in command prompt, you can simply use the DIR, which is directory. And here, what we see is we would see our file that we generated, the timestamp. So there are multiple ways to really view the information for your profiler. Then after that, we can deactivate. So once you're done with your um, let me do this, activate. And then let's run that again, right? And then once you're done, you want to get out of this, so you would then have the activate. And see how when you're in the virtual environment compared to the not virtual environment. So the second part of the notes, after it goes through profiling it taught and benchmarking, um, you would see that C profile provides you the number of calls, the total time spent. That would be the account of times for per functions. You would, can have cumulative time, time per call, and then you can have the file name that will be corresponding. The second part of the note talks about Kcash Grind, which is a graphical user interface that we can use C profiler with. And Kcash Grind runs on Linux. It would read the C profile output file. Remember the prop file that we saw earlier? It would be able to read that. And it would use the PyProp to call tree to convert the output file into readable format inside the application. So this is the example program, which is Taylor. So to assess it with C profile, we can use Python and be able to run that. So let me come back here. I'm gonna go ahead and Deactivate this. And then we clear it. So, okay. Then after that, I'm going to run the tailor and make sure that that file is in the folder. So, what happened is you're not going to have any output here. But what, it's, what we're doing is we are going to generate a profile file called prop for taylor.py. So if we list it with DIR, we again would see here's our taylor file, right? And we would again see the updated version of the prop. Now, what if I wanted to name it something different like prop one, I can do that. So you can generate multiple profiles for your application or different programs by outputting a file like this. Then you would use Kcash Grind to read the file. And so this would be better in Linux. And so you can use your virtual machine 
to be able to install Kcash Burn, which we will do in the lab and be able to read. So after we're done, we can deactivate. And so that would use the deactivate command, which takes you back to your regular path, okay? Compared to the virtual environment. So to answer the next question and actually to describe the purpose of Kcash Grind, in the application profiling, it is a graphical user interface that is useful for analyzing profiling output file from C profile. And it uses the Linux KDE development packages. So in order to install it, you have to make sure that you have the KDE development package installed. You don't necessarily need to install the entire desktop. And I believe the newest desktop from KDE is Plasma. So the desktop require a lot of resources, which takes up a lot of space in your virtual machine or your Linux system. You can simply just add the, the development packages from KDE and that will be enough. And Kcash Crime has a feature called Call Graph. And call graph, if you refer to the, the notes, it allows us to visualize the relationship with the functions. So on page 11, it shows you how you can convert the output file into PyProf2 call tree. So that way Kcash Grind can read it. And it would show you the total time, the cumulative time. So instead of in command line in text, you would have the visualization of your profile. So call graph or color graph is a feature in Kcash Grind that allows us to interface and see the properties of the selected function. Another tool that you can use is gbrof 2 dot And to access it, you can visit the GitHub repository. This also produces a graph of your profilers. So we can use line by line profilers or known as line profiler to look at the line by line execution time. This is a third party module. It is not included with Python package. So when you use a line profiler, you would use a decorator with profile. So you would use the add symbol profile. And you would place it above the function that you want to profile. And in the example here, you would see that this is a script that they use to be able to profile simul.py. So it shows the number of lines that it assess, the time in microseconds, the time per hit, the percentage or the fraction of the total time spent to execute that line and the line content. So Python is not limited to just one tool. You have multiple tools and also third-party tools to be able to build out different profiles for your application. So in the questions, we can say that the purpose of call graph is that it's the graphical representation of calling relationship between functions. It's going to give you the squares 
and that would represent the relationship for the functions in your program. And for line profiler, this is to determine the costly statement. So line by line, we can assess. We would use the app profile decorator. So the decorator profile, this is used to output the profiling from our program. So once you have the result from benchmark and profiling, what are you gonna do with that to really optimize your code? You can consider improving your algorithms from looking at the result. You can also reduce the number of instructions in your code. And we also have a module that's gonna help us to do that. So on page 13, it talks about how you can optimize your code. So based on the example, they took the small step in looking at how they can improve the way that they use X, Y coordinates in the simulator. And when they minimize the number of instructions in the calculation of the angle factor, what they see is that it reduces the operations which optimize the program. And the example is shown on page 13. So to look at the byte code, we can use DIS module. This allows you to inspect your code and convert it into byte code. That's going to help us evaluate how we can size down our program. So in the next question, it asks you, how can DIS module is, how is DIS module used to improve Python application? We can use it to inspect the bytecode instructions in the application. It's gonna help us discover how the statements get converted and serves as an exploration or the learning tool of the Python right, bytecode representation. So it takes the program and convert it into bytecode instructions. That allows us to see how we can reduce the number of instruction in our program. So to improve performance, we can look at how we would approach the reduction of instructions. Another area that we can look into is your memory profile. So memory profiling is a module, memory profiler module. We can use that to look at how memory is used in our application. It's very similar to line profiler, but it's focused on memory usage of the process. Now, you can use this with IPython. If you're running the magic command, you simply use the MP run magic command. So those are some of the libraries that we would tap into when we want to assess our program performance and think of ways to optimize our program. We can use memory profiler, C profiler, line profiler, or profile module to output files that contain profile information of our application, or 
we can have the output on our command line or in IPython. So there are several approach in how we would address that, right? So these are some of the resources that we can use to look at ways to help us determine how we can improve our program. And so after this class, your perspective in how you design a Python program will be different than the introduction class, because now you're able to implement tools and resources to elevate your program using libraries either from Python or from external parties. And so chapter two gives you the overall emphasis. We are going to use time it module and we are going to create profiles throughout this class. So this is the foundation for how we would assess our code or script or our application. Thank you for watching this video. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know.